control double left um, blend where it says blend two, and we're just going to call it gloss. Enter, and we're going to click on helmet, and we're going to drag center click, drag the gloss into layer shader attributes. Center click, drag gloss into the very front of the line here. So now it goes gloss. Oh yes, because I switched from blend to Lambert. So when you switch them, back, switch them from different shaders, uh, you have to rename them. So um, give me a second here. I'll rename these helmet white and helmet blue. Okay, just for my sanity. Okay, so on the helmet, it should go gloss, helmet white, and white. And on the stripe, we do the same thing. Uh, center click gloss, drag it, drop it in, center click and drag to the front of the line so it goes gloss, helmet blue, and orange. So now we have a consistent gloss coat going over the entire helmet, which will give it a nice even reflection. And we're going to do a quick render. And so we have our render, and I decided to put a little base under our helmet of uh, a checkerboard. So on the helmet, you can actually see. Uh, better the reflection how you know that worked with the gloss coat and you can see the hot spot from um, the the default light um, to show you that the gloss coat actually works Let's see here now I'll close this out and I'll give you a few extra thingies here go back to hypershade let's open this up a little wider Okay, now let's click on Helmet White and we'll go in here. Actually, let's click on the PSD file texture. Now, instead of creating a new file or a new whole texture um, texture rig for uh, each helmet, uh, the best, the e one of the easiest things you can do is go into your original PSD file, uh, change uh, the logo that you want. Uh, change the change the mascot and when you come back into Maya all you do is go into the image file the PSD file texture go over to image name and click reload and it just reloads the same file with the new picture that you edited um, and that's that's one of the best ways to go now the thing is of course you you have to have a new um, UV texture um, to you know resize everything to make sure your your new logo or new uh, mascot's the correct size. So all you do is just go make a new um, UV uh, snapshot and just bring it into to your, to your PSD file. Or if you just and as long as you haven't changed it, file, there shouldn't so be any problem. Change the file, or you make a completely different logo, and you need to save it under uh, a new file name because you you know want to keep the old old logo or mascot. <clears throat> So instead of creating another another uh, PSD file texture, all we do is again just click on the PSD file texture instead of hitting reload um, because it would just reload the same file. Just click on the little file folder that's over here and double click on the new file that you want, and it'll just bring it up. And you just got to make sure the alpha to use transparency doesn't switch over, and you should be all set. And I think that's all it for the uh, textures. I just got one more thing to show real quick, which which Ray asked me about. Um, all the little different pieces here from from whoops, didn't want to do that. Uh, from the uh, face guard uh, to the actual helmet to the the attachment hardware to the little um, bolts that are inside holding the hardware on. Everything is a separate piece. So instead of selecting everything and moving everything at the same time, uh, which could lead to shifting and, and stuff that you don't want to happen, uh, what I did was, or what you want to do is, uh, um, go up to Window. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, go to Create. Almost all the way down is a thing called Locator. Click on that, and it'll bring up what looks like this thing right here. It's a little um, three-dimensional cross X thingy. And you can resize it any size you want, big or small. And so what I did is I created one, dragged it out in front of the helmet so it lines up with the center line of the helmet. And I selected all of the helmet, everything that's there, shift selected the locator, 
and hit the P for parenting and now once I select the locator I select everything and when I translate it translate the locator you translate the entire helmet nothing shifts or anything and you can rotate it same thing and scaling it scales uniformly okay and say you don't like where the center point is, say you, you know during rotation stuff you don't want to rotate it from the center point because you know it, it doesn't rotate from the center of the helmet so what we're going to do is select the locator and hit W for translate and hit the insert key which is just above the delete key and you get the uh, uh, translate for the center point and what we're going to do is just drag the center point uh, space bar to get out of there, space bar on the side and I'll just make sure the center point is yeah, in the center of the helmet. Okay, space bar to get out, go up to perspective, space bar. And what you do is hit insert again, and it puts the uh, um, translate icon back. And so you can hit rotate, and, and he rotates it from the center point, no longer from where the locator is. But you still grab the locator. You still grabs everything else, just the center point has moved now to the center of the helmet. Alrighty, so I hope that helped you, Ray, and anyone else who takes a look at this, hopefully they you know, helps them out with uh, transparencies and how to uh, um, set up your your um, UVs to get ready to make your images to map onto your UVs and, and all that wonderful stuff. So, you know, any comments or, you know, requested and if you have any suggestions for any more tutorials uh, hopefully as I get used to doing tutorials I'll be a little bit better at them so ah good for me okay this was fun alright guys enjoy give me an email and I'll see y'all later